Hello, uh, Robbie Strike here. Today we're going to talk about the channels that are available in Europe. And uh, I have a special guest today. I have Volker from the land of Austria. I should show you guys where we're, we're, we're uh, pointer Austria. Yeah, so we brought Volker in. He's from the land of Austria. We got Volker, and he's very knowledgeable on satellite TV in uh, around the world. Uh, hi, Hello. Volker. Uh, welcome to the uh, live stream. Uh, Volker Hello. has a channel. You want to tell uh, the folks about your channel on YouTube? It's Hello. Cool. Nice to meet you <laughs> to this transmission with Robbie and me. My name is Volker. And um, I'm doing the Wikipedia show, uh, uh, repairing video sets and mostly CD players. And I start with uh, my hobby doing the satellite receiving in, a, in 1987. So um, it's a long time ago. And Robbie and me asking me, can we do a satellite show also? What we can receive here for the most satellites uh, that we receive here and which programs are on. And important was the FTA free to air scan over all satellites, what I received from my kitchen window. I have also three dishes on the roof, uh, one T90 wave frontier with 15 LMBs and 15 satellite positions. I have a motorized dish with 125 centimeters. This is oh, how much inch? I think so, three inch. No, four, four, <laughs> four foot, four foot. And I have a small one, 80 centimeter dish for a ham radio operation on 26 degrees with an uplink. But incidentally, my motor is defect, so I can only doing the kitchen window. And this is mm, the thing. Microphone to Robbie. Microphone to? To you. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thanks, for, thanks for coming. Yeah, I appreciated your channel. Um, uh, I you you kind of did a, you did a video where you um, kind of went through the channels that are available in Europe, because in Europe there is a like there's two bands of satellite. There is a C band and KU band. C band you need a large dish like the large big black dishes uh, as I refer to a lot. And on KU band, they're like maybe a, a smaller, like a 32, 36 inch dish, a little bit bigger than your, your uh, home, direct to home pay TV service. Um, but in Europe, uh, there's a lot more channels on KU band, which is the smaller dish, which makes it a lot easier. Um, do like a Google street view of an apartment building in Europe or something like that. You'll see like satellite dishes on the balconies on all these buildings. Um, it's, it, it's actually, uh, a lot more known about and more popular in Europe than it is actually here in Canada and the U S where people, when I tell people about um, free satellite TV, they never heard about it. <laughs> it's uh, not something that's in their culture. They think the only way to get TV here in Canada, the U S maybe not so much in the U S these days, but uh, at least uh, what I find here in Canada is like a large percentage of the population don't know that you can get TV channels from either terrestrial over the air or over the air. So we're going to talk about, um, I guess, some of the channels. Now, what satellite would you say has the most amount of English channels if you're in Europe and you wanted to watch some satellite TV? It's uh, the 28.2 uh, uh, satellite east. And uh, we're starting with K KU band here in Europe um, uh, instead of C bands that other countries have. Uh, that was the idea to having smaller dish in the Sydney's and uh, the idea was from Astra in the first situation in 1989. Uh, they said they must have a high transmission power for um, no 28.2, 28.2, 28.2. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna bring it up here on Link Set. No, oh, not west, a... not west. It's west. Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm on the wrong. Yeah. yeah, I'm on the uh, wrong. Uh... Uh... Yeah, yeah, no problem. I, in Europe, it would be east because it's the Eastern Hemisphere. And I want to yeah. also, uh, <laughs> people are going to ask, so I want to bring this up. Is uh, so uh, say this um, this represents the Earth, and Canada is here, and um, uh, Austria is I don't know here or whatever. The satellites like they're kind of like a geostationary orbit. Like I don't know, they'd be like here, like really high up, twenty two, two thousand. Was it? What's the two thousand? 
uh, 22,500 22, or 200 kilometers above the Earth. Anyways, they don't 36, really... 36,000 kilometers and 22,000 miles. <laughs> anyway, it's on the other side of the Earth. So unfortunately, here in Canada, we can't get the European satellites. And if you're in Europe, and I get a lot of this, I, if you're in Africa, you can't get the um, uh, Canadian satellites. I talk about Canadian satellites that may get people in uh, different parts of the world. It's like, can we get uh, Galaxy 19 in Africa? It's like, no, it, uh, it's flying uh, above North America. So it uh, it doesn't reach that far, unfortunately. Now, sometimes they downlink and uplink channels. And uh, like, for example, there's a satellite called the Transatlantic Satellite. It's 55, uh, 55 West. And sometimes there's shows on there that they that are live, like sporting events, and they have it live in the clear on 55 West so that people can see it over in, over in Europe. And anyway, so we're back to back on this. So, so uh, you said um, twenty eight, right? Yeah, twenty eight uh, east. east. East, yeah. yeah. Now you're on the right way. Yeah, yeah. you're on the right way. Moving, moving the to the page here. Yes, correct. And a little bit more. And one more. And one more. I'm I'm giving links at a whole lot of like. Um, their ads are getting like a lot of downloads from next from, uh, the from next one is here is the arabic satellite in the next one is uh 28 uh 28, 28. Yeah, correct so it has <clears throat> so it has the sky channels in the clear or are they like uh spot beam mm. because that's another thing you run into yes yes this is uh this is um ago years ago that the spot beam we moved from the european uh footprint this is the receiving possibilities what we have here to the United Kingdom. So in the United Kingdom, you have a uh, 55 decibels uh, for, 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 for receiving and a little dish is uh, only in use. And we cannot receive it here anymore here in Vienna at my location. And this was the problem uh, that you need a 2.7 meter dish. And uh, it's illegal to have here a, a dish size this. Uh, one meter 50, it's the maximum what is allowed. Uh, from the landlords and the house. From the landlords. Now, if you are a property owner, and, and I guess it, uh, in uh, there's more renters than property owners. I guess uh, is that true? Correct. Uh, but uh, if you if you have your own house and your own um, property, so you can uh, installing a ten foot dish. Ten foot there. or like a twenty foot. I, I, you know, maybe uh, a twenty foot. If your wife don't hit you, yeah. <laughs> You're not getting a twenty foot satellite dish. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I would like to ins if I have my own property, I would like to install um, not that not that twenty foot dish, but. 15 will be nice huh <laughs> i know you i know you 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 told me that you you would like to get the 10 what what is this for dish eight foot what do you have in use uh i'm using an eight footer um yeah. and the reason why i got that is i like to be able to see what i can get at least with an eight footer because there is a lot of eight footers available it's, it doesn't take as much oh. of my yard okay sometimes i wish i had a 10 footer because the 10 footer would uh um there's a there's a, there's a few transponders and there's like channels like retro TV that are on C-band and I can't really oh, okay uh, you know view that view that and it's like it's such a because of the higher FEC which ten means centimeters like, more you have one dB more in in yeah. circle mm -hmm. so it is in, in zoom twenty centimeters uh, yeah you have one dB more yep. yeah so uh, yeah we don't get um, I mean there's plenty to watch I find if you have a C band dish there's a plenty to watch uh, on KU band if you want sports feed sports feeds and news they're good for that uh, and uh, faith based but uh, um, there's not a huge amount of selection of channels in of KU band if you have a motorized and that's even if you have a motorized dish like Mm -hmm. uh, even with like a motorized dish, sometimes uh, you don't even get as much channels as one satellite that people get in Europe where they can get like hundreds of channels and they'd probably be within those hundreds of channels, like at least two or three that would be like go-to channels that you would go to and watch. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You see that in my FDA scan over the, uh, we doing the FDA scan over the world or over, over the planet. Also, maybe in Pakistan, one person is also would like to do this for us. Oh yeah, <laughs> he would like to connect us. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in talk. Um, so uh, I'm doing the scan on the 19.2, and there is more than 1,400 channels available, but a lot of them are crypted. That means a uh, I think so 250 or 300 are open and free to air. Yeah, that's the same thing here. We have a lot of channels that are uh, encrypted. Um, yeah, we're, um, what, what, what I talk about when I mention free satellite TV, that means free channels that are in the clear, uh, mm -hmm. that are, uh, you can basically buy any stock um, uh, satellite receiver that's a, usually referred to free to air receiver but i i, I really prefer the term free satellite tv to free to air because i've seen the term free to air thrown mm -hmm. around in so many different ways people talk about their streaming service and how it's free to air well it's not on the air it's streaming so like free to air has just been a a term that i, I find has been butchered and over uh used uh in a pro like in, in different ways that doesn't it, it makes it kind of sound confusing where free satellite tv is basically what, what I'm doing is free channels that are uh, un, uh, unencrypted that are clear on satellite. Um, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to go back to this site here we were looking at. What I noticed something that we don't see a whole lot here in North America is these lower band, KU band uh, uh, channels. So this 10, uh, 10 gigahertz, because a lot of our channels are like 11 and 12 yeah. gigahertz. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they so have a better uh, quality in the case of the 12 gigahertz you have one or two dbs more on a smaller dish yeah and a lot of this stuff here uh it's um it's from the uk and it's spot beam so you but you can pick it up if you have a larger dish is that what you're saying that's correct yeah yep. if you're if you have your own home or whatever you can pick these up but most a lot of people who live in apartments they can't pick this up is that what if you have a window that's um like you you use your window uh, to, yeah. uh um for your satellite so uh could you have a four foot like if you have a big window like a four foot window <laughs> and have a four foot dish coming out of the window can you kind of get around the landlord rules uh like what you've done in some of your videos this is this is most illegal yeah uh but the point is that uh you uh, is not allowed to installing a dish on the front side of the window. This was forbidden since now, I think so, 10 or 15 years. Uh, in the older age, ago 15 years, we have installed the dish with one meter and one two meters in front of the window. <laughs> and so they came to us and said, hey, this is illegal and it looks like not good. And But uh, uh, take cable, take cable. And uh, I said, yeah, but cable cost me money each month. Yeah, and we'd yeah, like to. I mean, you, you can get a satellite and get hundreds oh. of channels with the satellite. Correct. Yeah. Well, we have the same thing here in Canada and, and in the U.S. The U.S., it, one thing that's nice about the U.S. is there is um, a uh, FCC law which allows you, if you're a renter, you can have up to a 1.2 meter i think it's a meter i'm not sure of the size you'd have to look it up but um you're allowed to have uh, a satellite dish uh every home that you can't really have any laws restricting people of that uh, which is illegal here in canada it's kind of more uh i i've ran into like apartment buildings say well our insurance won't cover if you have a satellite dish on your balcony and and uh all that mm -hmm. uh but i mean you can get uh I, I ended up putting one in my window and disguising it so, so that it would uh, uh, not be, uh, not be uh, I guess I would get in trouble for it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, in apartment buildings too, where everyone had like satellite dishes on their balconies. And then uh, they just said that they would pick out, pick and choose how they would enforce the rules, which is always not fair either. Mm hmm yeah, correct. So the, the the point with the dish on the on the on the window side was that it was then not allowed, and then from one day to the next, it was allowed to mount it on the roof. But it must be a professional company that will do this in case of uh, hurricanes. We don't have hurricanes, but we have here strong wind with a one hundred kilometers per hour. This is how much miles? I don't know. And uh, then. I'm professional. I, I worked 35 years in the video industry and um, 
be installing near 600 dishes or so around here in Vienna, in the room Vienna, in the city. And uh, from uh, the, the biggest size was only two meter. I mean, this was um, not so not so big like a 10 foot dish. Yeah. yeah. And um, did you see you... that video that was the guy posted on on YouTube where uh, it was from the 90s and he inspected a, a dish that was installed um, the volts guy, the one, uh, the one, the twelve volts guy or whatever. Um, it, it was uh, uh, where um, he the, he was inspecting a satellite dish that was like basically they sand put sandbags down and held the dish down so like when a big gust of wind would have went by. Well, I think the dish already moved from when they set it up because uh, a gust of wind would have hit it and then it would have been <laughs> blown off um, because it wasn't secured down. <laughs> anyway i guess there's been lots of satellite installers that have done that they used to be like satellite installers that would come in uh just hey i'll install a satellite dish for you and then and then a lot of people have this attitude well satellite doesn't work or you know every time it rains hey here's one you must hear every time it rains they lose signal well it's like i'm thinking well your satellite dish is probably not properly installed yeah, it's not it's not correct uh, correct aligned. Yeah, you must yeah. align it in the center and also skewing the L and B or L and C. However, we we talk about uh, you must uh, put in the uh, in the maximum of the signal quality and not the level of the maximum of the level. All all, inst all, all installers are doing the maximum level, but this is wrong. In digital size, we use the maximum quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right. correct. So yeah. this is all European channels. So what 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 satellite was it that you look at? This is all sky stuff and uh, on this. Uh, the most look, in case of that, my my uh, my language is German, and yeah. uh, my country is German, and in Germany is also German, <laughs> and uh, a part of the Switzerland, and a lot of people in Switzerland yeah. are Liechtenstein. They are also talking German. Um, this is more than 100 million people. They can understand German. Also, a lot of people they are coming here from the worker from Turkey and uh, ex Yugoslavia, they are talking also German. I mean, uh, they can receive that too uh, over satellite, these free yeah. programs. Well, this is like something that goes back into the days when um, I, I, wa I used to do, when I was a kid, I did uh, paper delivery. And then I saw this, it was a different looking satellite dish. And then I asked the man, uh, what kind of channels can you get with that thing? Uh, and he told me he was, he was from Germany. So he said he got German channels and it looked like, this is like in the late eighties, early nineties. It was like a KU band dish, but like different than anyone I, I've seen before. It almost looked like one of those microwave dishes, like round. And he told me he was able to get German channels uh, on KU band in the uh, even in the nineties. So that would have been KU band, and it also would have been analog back in those days because it would have been pre pre digital. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. At the start, we started the KU band in the 80s. Uh, 83, we start a uh, Eutel sat in the 13 degrees or so, and they uh, launched the satellite at the 13 degrees. And then uh, after that time, uh, the SES was founded in, I think so, 1985 or so, and they launched their first satellite in 1989. And this was the 19.2 east position and uh, one of the first um, channel uh, they are on it was the sky channel yeah, for united kingdom yeah for from robert murder yeah it was in 89 it starts and in 1890 it will come out <laughs> funny thing and funny station was that at 13 degrees pay tvs will send open without encoding <laughs> well that, that's uh, happened that's happened around uh it, it does happen here from time to time we'll get like some pay tv channels that'll be open in the clear and uh, um and then everyone will try to uh people in the uh, satellite uh, ho hobby will try to check it out they'll get like uh turner channels maybe in the clear and uh things like that um so you said robert Mur do you mean rupert murdoch from sky is it he isn't he the media guy that yes. started sky yeah. yeah yeah yes 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 he came from australia i think and uh he, he started with newspapers and tv stations and radio stations and whatever and um the thing was that uh at this time uh the decoders uh are was sometimes rebuilt by your own and uh, we have uh since the 80s we have a scart connector here you can see oh, yeah. that yeah 
this is a in video in and video out yeah and this was a decoder from the old age <laughs> you can see it um i hope so i can open it uh it was a little bit difficult to open it one moment uh and you have your first satellite receiver behind you there yes i must show you this um i have uh, i have my first satellite receiver here and this was really my first i bought that used this is a maspro uh sre atr and one wondering thing it have a remote control too. I'm using it. Well, where's the remote control? One moment. It's a little bit complicated to hold all. Yeah, for uh, sure. Usually oh, it would sit on the table. You have here, uh, you have here the uh, the remote control. It works after 35 years, <laughs> and you have 18 channels in store. But the funny thing is that. If you are, uh, if you are, would like to align the audio, you have here a jumping. This LED shows you which audio you aligned with a potentiometer with your screwdriver. You must align it, and these are stored. And here you can align it open by this big knob, where the transmitter was. We received with this only eight channels with a two meter dish and a KU band LNC, and on the back. It's also interest. Um, there was a. Oh, yeah. I changed. The, uh, it. There yeah. was a N. There was a N connector. <laughs> N connector with a fat cable. <laughs> it did a cost extremely. It was so expensive. This cable. It was now I change it to a F connector, but it was an N connector. And then I would like to show you also here. I have the old connection. That was the that was the connector. Look, this is an oh, N. Yeah. It was that was in the older, and this was the connection between the tuner. Have a F connection inside the box. I change it to a modern uh, cable. Modern cable, yeah. It has like kind of what a. Um, in this a, time, um, <laughs> looks like my CB radio connector for. But this is a this is a F connector. In this time, we have had. Echo Star LNCs. We're talking LNC. This is a LNC for low band. And uh, we are using magnetical polarizers on the KU band. You can see that here. There is a cable, and a current is fluting to this from a 20 to 130 milliampere. milliampere. And uh, so the polarization will be aligned. The wave fly here and goes there. That means you can skew it. Or yeah, killed it. Yeah, yep. some of the older satellite, um, uh, you're able to like uh, on your receiver tune the uh, the uh, the uh, was the dipole motor. So like you can tune it just a little bit so like uh, the get uh, better signal um, because like with analog sometimes you get snowy and if you just tweaked it a bit, it would come in more clear. And uh, most uh, LMBs don't have that now. You just plug it in the um, the coax cable, and it just automatically changes the polarity for you. So it's uh, you don't yes. need need to worry about all these extra wires in an LMB these days. And this and this fat thing, you look have a have a motorized. You have here a motor with a. It's a servo motor from a you know remote controlled airplane or stuff like this. And with this. Uh, white cable you're sending a pass white modulation inside and turning this pin inside this feet horn and it's going here inside and reflecting inside to this lnb or lnc however you can see here is the oh uh, sorry <laughs> other direction uh 1.1 db it's a good one it's two band <laughs> you have two bands <laughs> That was the. That was also one what I have <laughs> in this age, and we received first. The first was in uh, 80, 1989. We received only eight channels, and a system cost like six thousand shillings. These are six thousand dollars. You uh, under five six thousand US dollars, you don't get a system. 
That's kind of like the broadcast channels in Canada these days. We have like, I don't know, six, maybe 12, I don't know, like uh, networks. And it's always the same programming across the nation. <laughs> 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 yeah, and uh, I would like to show you the the, the decoder, and uh, we are uh, we are using analog. It was not crypted. It was an uh, analog. Um, uh, not making the synchron making the synchron wrong and uh, stuff like this. One moment, I cannot open this. <laughs> I don't know why. Just one second, please. And um, we have here. This was, aha, I see. I see where, where this happened. Now it's open. Now it's open. Look at this print, this board. Uh, we have here um, a system with a FPGA. And this FPGA making the complete ray synchronization of the picture, the framing from the picture, we have here 50 hertz and in canada you have 60 hertz also in united states you have other line numbers we had we have had in paul 625 lines and you have in the united states and in canada also the 525 lines but 60 hertz that the the picture frame rate was 10 hertz higher not correct it's I have 30 pictures total and with this decoder you can Open up uh, a signal that was pseudo crypted. I said, yeah, uh, it was not crypted. There was no mathematical uh, uh, things inside, but uh, the the lines will be without synchronization, and uh, this making the new frame for the synchronization and making all the lines correct in timing, and so uh, you can watch it. You have the problem uh, that you sit here in Austria and you cannot rent a decoder. That was one problem because the company was in Germany and it, the German said, we don't rent to Austrians because we have the same language, <laughs> but they, they don't rent to Austria. And um, that was starting in the 90, uh, 1991 was it finished with these decoders, type of decoders. And yeah, that was the well, older age. One thing, it's like one thing we have here in Canada is like the American um, subscription companies are not available here in Canada. So <laughs> it's, the same. It's, yeah, the same. it's the same thing with that. You would have in Austria if, um, yeah, to either get Germany or uh, UK programming. Um, Correct. Yeah. It's uh, well, uh, people who do get it, but they don't, they have ways of getting it. I guess they smuggle <laughs> in the receivers or whatever. You smuggle the cards, and there are the cards dealer on the border. <laughs> no, no, actually, people um, bring in receivers from like um, uh, other countries, and then just watch. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. <laughs> and they and they, pay, they pay for it. They just have a way of paying for it without you know, and then watch it in another country because uh, radio the satellite signals don't really stop at the border, so there, there's a way of uh doing that i'm not endorsing that i just i, I just say that's it's factual it's like <laughs> i mean i mean i mean the uk said this brexit ago years yeah and 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 now they're changing the beam from european to the united kingdom yeah i mean what what, what shall that be hey come on they they, they cannot close that out i mean out <laughs> it's it's uh it's crazy <laughs> what are they gonna do this yeah, yeah. So anyway, like yeah, so I can't get it here in Kingston, Ontario. I just put it like put my dish right up on top of the the uh, the Leon Center, and um, so yeah, if you use the site Dish Pointer and you're trying to figure out if you want to get European, if you're in Europe, you're in Canada, you're in US, you're in Africa, you can use the site DishPointer.com. Mm -hmm. Great resource. You just find your location on a map, and then just drop this little satellite dish uh, in the different spots. And you can zoom in as well, just like to see if the tree, there's trees or any obstacles or buildings in your way. And uh, so in my case, uh, my satellites are, are um, uh, they're 101 West, for example. You'll see the green light. Yes. And, and the green light will say that uh, you should be able to get it in your part of the world. And so this is a great resource if you're looking to aim a satellite dish, um, dishpointer.com. Before you even go out, just kind of survey the area where you're going to install it. I've done this um, all the time and I can find out basically all sorts of information. Also, if you're putting up a motor, it gives you your your uh, latitude, longitude. 
so if you're entering in uh, USALs, you can um, have all your information to enter into your satellite uh, if you're going to do it that way. But a mm -hmm. great tool. I uh, rec recommend using this. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, there is an app, a dish pointer app that you can use on your phone that you have to pay for. But uh, there is free apps uh, that uh, will basically work the same way on your phone. Now, you can't really use your cell phone to align your dish, but... Okay. Uh, but you can... Uh, uh, you can use the, the the chime put me in a <laughs> mental state <laughs> um but you can uh, um you can use it as an aid to just give you an idea of where to point it um yeah i got a lot of people i can't use anything what are you using my phone oh well that's why uh, get one of those satellite meters uh will will be a big help or bring out a receiver uh, uh, bring a receiver outside and a tv set which is the cheapest way the way i used to do it all the time if anyone has a small TV, everyone buys giant, huge TVs. I don't know if anyone actually has like little tiny pocket TVs or like just a small TV monitor that they can bring outside to align a satellite dish. Yeah, one interesting story is that, that the RCA developed the crystals uh, for liquid crystal displays and they sold it to Japan. And Casio make in the 80s one of the first black and white small pocket TV that I owned, but I don't know where it is. I, I yeah, lose I, it or sell it or whatever. I have from the 90s the little pocket vision, but I mean, I don't have my cell phone with me right now, but. Um, yeah it's like it was the screen was smaller than what your average cell phone is now and uh <laughs> i have a black and white crt <laughs> with a, a black two and, and a half yeah. inch <laughs> two and a half inches actually that's another thing you could use if you if you still find one because they last forever some of these old black and white tvs that a lot of them like if you find them you plug them in you might find they'll still work like what can you watch them because everything is switched to digital but if you get like a converter you can plug in a Raspberry Pi or your satellite receiver and uh, use it just, you know, as you're taking it outside and uh, aiming your dish just to see your signal uh, your and your SNR quality. Mm -hmm. I think I've done that one. At one point, we had an old black and white TV. <coughs> yeah, also I have um, I have the measurement system from Grundig, yeah? and you have a scanner on it. You can scan in uh, in 50 hertz uh, the total band, yeah. Uh, with one gigahertz, yeah, and this will be also interest if you have a if you have a scanner like this because this scanner on the GT Medio V8, you know this machine. Uh, we have the same. You have the orange one, and I have the yellow one. It's oh, you, so you, slow. You, you, you can like get them. This. You can get them at Amazon. Sells a lot. You larger. sleep. You sleep. This is this is this is not a scanner in my eyes. A scanner must be go in one second. The total band, the totally band, and. Maybe we should oh, yeah, buy the, the, yeah, the GT one. Media reviewed. Yeah, it's, uh, unbelievable. I, you know what? For for the price of that thing, I figured it was worth. Um, it's, it's not. It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's not it's bad. For, yeah, what like I, 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 like just even for using it as a portable um, a satellite receiver, if your power goes out, because I can plug one of those right into the dish. Just unplug yeah. my dish uh, and then run some coax and then uh, monitor. Um, the TV while well, the power is out, and and also you charge it up, um, plug it into my plug it in my car and, or whatever, and charge it up if we have a power outage. Because here where I live, we're subject to ice storms, which I'm I'm always worried about in the winter time if we have an ice storm, which can knock out our power grid, and we be we can be without electricity for for a period of time. <laughs> for for uh, for for known transponders and known channels, is this GT Media not bad or not the worst thing of the world uh, for aligning? I, I I recommend the Sat Hero. That's the one I have, and it's probably the best. Like I, I always go to my Sat Hero uh, meter because it gets uh, even the weaker signal. It finds the weak signal, and like you could just basically pan like a, a Shaw Direct dish over to. Um, over to uh, like just sort of hold it. I hold it in my arms, and I can find uh, the transponders with uh, with uh, with the uh, with the sat hero for hidden for hidden weak signals to search. Is it nothing? I mean, you need a very fast scanner that scans in one second, um, often the band. Yeah, that should uh, we should build one. I have the idea. We built one with a. <laughs> Yeah, I can build it, but I don't have the time yet at the moment. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is like time is uh, yeah very precious. And um, 
CP Wolf Enjoy. asked this question for you there, uh, um, Volker. Is a weak bit on Discord. Weak bit on Discord. What I'm doing on Discord? Uh, yes, this. Yeah, this on, I, yeah, Discord, I, yeah. I have a lot. Yeah, I, I, I'm asking some things on Discord for my Pine Book 64. That you know, this is an ARM core Pine Book with Manjaro Linux. I'm asking on Discord some people what they're gonna do, but. I'm there also, yeah, on Discord, but uh, I never have a watch now yet at the moment. Uh, it was difficult. Uh, but uh, uh, speaking of Discord, I was hoping tomorrow. I'm not gonna. I'm doing the live stream on a Friday uh, morning, so uh, yeah. maybe I'll do a Discord Saturday night. Sometimes I do it. I haven't been doing it over the summertime because things got busy. But I think I'll hop into Discord tomorrow night. I won't do a live stream, but I'll hop onto Discord. And okay. if anyone wants to chat. Uh, we do voice chats usually sometimes on Saturday nights. So uh, if you're, if you're, okay. I don't. Is this for I, the radio station? Sorry, is this for the radio station then? Also the Discord or no? No, it's just we, a satellite TV general chat. We just chat about everything. Okay. okay. Um, if you invite me, I can I can have a watch if I have time. Yeah. So, I don't know if I put uh, it in the description right now, but I think it's in my all my links and on my link tree. Um. Uh. You can find the Discord link. Robbie, you can you can recognize this. <laughs> Look, this is also a part from the eighties for a satellite receiving system from Triax. Yeah, uh, it costs like, one of these pieces costs like twenty two thousand shillings. These are around two thousand US dollars or two and a half thousand Canadian or three thousand Canadian. And three thousand, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's Canadian dollars. Eight thousand shillings is. I don't know. It's not so expensive. It's only less than under thousands. And um, interest, uh, they came from Japan. In Japan, okay. built Rex. Now the question I would have, and I was wondering if you could um, the vertical, which is on the top, and it's making a, a the signal is making a turn there. Yes. Does that get weaker signal than the horizontal that looks like it's more direct on the uh, LNC? Interest, I make a test, and yeah. the interest is this, this is a waveguide in real, yeah? Mm -hmm. And all polarizations from the horizontal, also from the vertical, I came in with the same power. And it's not important if you have a direction change like this. It's only a little bit less. I think so a half or one dB. It's not so much. But yeah, you lost, of course, with this mechanical part. This, this mechanical tube here inside, it's going straight to here. These have the better signal, but you align that horizontal in this thing that uh, you, you have this on the flat and, and this vertical here. So I don't see in the measurement a little, I only a little, it's only a little bit uh, difference, but uh, you can. Um, I made a I made a test with my own builded waveguide. Uh, I show you the picture with the copper tube, and it was round. Yeah, it's so it's kind of like I used to use those uh, the cheaper CKU band uh, LMBs, and uh, I what it, like it's really tricky to get the uh, the uh, KU band part uh, aligned perfectly on a C yeah, band. I, 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 but, I know um, why. Yeah, you know why. Uh, the point is that the hole from the C band dish is like this, yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the back side is the KU band, and the hole is like this. That means this hole looks to this hole, and if you spot it, yeah, by your eyes, then you have the problem. Then you see only a small field on the dish, and so the KU band never worked. This is not good. Well, I, you know what? I actually had the KU band working pretty decently at one point. And then I switched to the, um, I thought I'd get better uh, C-band signal with one of the titanium LMBs. And that's pretty much what I use all the time anyway. I just use the titanium LMB. Now, the C-band dish can see a few satellites that are on the eastern, uh, like the um, 28 west. And so I'm able to pick up KU band with that. But I'm able to pick up KU band with my other, with my other uh, dishes. I can get the full arc pretty much. If I leave it at the end of my deck, which is kind of a nice, uh, which is kind of a bad spot being at the end of the deck, but it it works works better for me that way. I 
I think this LMB came out of the end of the 80s and uh, the beginning of the 90s, and this LMB will be made in the United Kingdom. And I think it's from Mr. Birkil. Yeah, Mr. Birkil was the first guy who received in 1981 a satellite on C band with his own dish and own built LNB or LNC. Yeah, uh, the first name was LNA. Donnie mentioned it in one Facebook uh, comments, yeah? And uh, I have this, I think so we should also use it and maybe it works today. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> quite possible that it, it could work. Uh, well, it's, <laughs> the funny thing is I when I bought a secondhand C-band satellite dish, it had a dipole mo mo motor in it. I But I would plug it into like a modern uh, uh, satellite receiver and I was able to get channels but the thing is i only got one polarity so i would move the satellite it would be i think it was a, whatever um uh, the polarity the weather channel is here in canada because i got that and i got, it came in pretty good with the lmb when i uh had my black beauty satellite dish going because i just wanted to, before i changed the lmb i wanted to see if the lmb still worked um but then i ended up just ended up putting a um uh, a cku band lmb on it and uh from there i was uh <laughs> uh, from there, I never went back to this huge LMB that came with the uh, the old dish that I got. Yeah, what we also must mention is the temperature <laughs> stability on LMBs, because in case of the oscillators they are built in, we have here one of the best. I found out one of the best is Black Inverto, is uh, LMB. Uh, you have near one decibel more signal strange to the signal to the noise uh, than with other that I yeah, found out. And you're telling me they, they don't they don't make that LMB anymore, so you yeah. can't, we can't get them. <laughs> in case of what? In case of the PLL synthesizer LMBs, they bring it out today. This is also from this company, and uh, this is the new 410. It's no advertisement for it, but it's not so good in the sensitivity than the other one, yeah, than the old one. But here you have one thing: you can change the oscillator for small band signals to receive or exact receiving, yeah, uh, to a better uh, performance. Uh, you build in a 0 0.5 or 0 0.2 ppm TCXO oscillator, yeah, temperature compensated. X oscillator, yeah, it's also super. The 410, I like it, <laughs> it's compact, it's super, but the form is like, ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, those things, uh, yeah, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm trying to get the satellite over. <clears throat> uh, we got Kurt, uh, from New York State. Uh, I don't know if he has his microphone on, I'll bring up Kurt. He's uh, we got a caller, Kurt. Are oh. you uh, you got a mic plugged in there? Yeah, I've got yeah. a mic plugged in. All oh, right, hello, nice to meet you. Same here. Did you have a question for Volker, Kurt? No, I just wanted to join this way. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and what I also would like to show is this uh, This we use today. The interesting is this, is the feed. Uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this area, we have a feed, a normal feed, like a metal, uh, like form this. And this is also a lens. It looks like in this direction, in the, that direction, in, in okay, into yeah. the. You you can you can watch a spot from your lamp. Uh, then you have also for the offset. Uh, this uh, in real is microwave light, yeah, but um, we cannot see it by our eyes. In case of the photosensitive, our eyes are in other frequency, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, Robbie. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just trying to find your channel here so I can uh, post it into the. Okay, post it with, with, with YouTube. Uh, with uh, YouTube these days, if you're a smaller channel, so please subscribe to uh, Volker's channel. Um, or I'll post it over here in the uh, restream. So I'll say restream sharing it, but. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching it. You're welcome. Uh, in case of, um, I have a lot of LNCs in the in the years from '87 to these days, and I build a lot of systems. And so, uh, these are the rest of my LNCs from my own systems. How do we bring that up? There we are. So here's Volker's channel here on YouTube. Please subscribe. Give him a, a million subscribers on YouTube, and give him a golden play button. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, YouTube, yeah, yeah. YouTube is making it harder for smaller channels to get to be like bigger these days. I don't know. I find it's like because I searched for you and I had a hard time finding Weekbit, and I had typed in Weekbit satellite. There, I found you. But you you write it with two e's. <laughs> hey, oh yeah. Well, there that's also but, but you, that I have but dyslexia. You can, but you can also search it by interest. The the things what I repaired the the T like PDH three hundred and C or Cambridge Audio or three hundred forty C CD players. They then you found it the weak bit. But if you're searching with weak bit with uh, a weak bit. <laughs> the funny story behind the week bit was that Heinz, a friend of mine, uh, back in the 90s, we sitting in a pub and drinking a beer and the white wine and so on. And then uh, he, he, he say, I, I show him how how I can program a, a special tool on the computer and so on. And he said, this is only a week bit. <laughs> and from this time on, I'm the week bit. <laughs> That was the funny thing. You're modding a Amiga 6000, is that 600? Yeah, 600. really. That, that, this was a gift from a friend. Yeah, I never have had an Amiga. <laughs> and the, the next funny thing was that I have bought now my first, I mean, it was years ago, uh, C64, yeah, the Commodore. <laughs> I had a C64. That's how I used to first get on the internet was with a C64. <laughs> Here you phone. have to, look look on the left on the left please down uh, on the left side you have the inverto 412 to how to rebuild it for uh, external uh, TCXO oscillator you yeah. can rebuild it by your own yeah and I show you this yeah what uh, what video editor do you uh, do you use Volker I'm using the KDN Live on yeah, the line of KDN Live too yeah that's what I use is KDN Live. Yeah. You're, cutting, you're cutting open the uh, DL yeah. DLNC here. You must, you must close it then, yeah. You're I, gonna get like a copyright claim. Someone's playing your content on, so don't don't give me a a trouble. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I don't making companies bad because I know it's very hard to live with uh, to making a product and bring that out. I don't say this is bad or so. No, this is not my this is not my idea to have. I only repair. They said, "Hey, if you repair something, then uh, then it saves the world." <laughs> this is my. This yeah, is my, like that's that's my mm -hmm. like. I, I'm against what app like people like uh, companies like Apple where they don't want you to have the right to repair anything. Um, yeah, and it's like I, we you know it's a more environmentally friendly. It infringes like, on their right to make money. Yeah, yeah, like a company like um, yeah. Yeah, money. Like a, yeah, a three thousand dollars fridges that last like five years, and then you got to buy a new one. Crazy, I mean, a, a three thousand, uh, a three three thousand billion dollar company must making money. <laughs> Very funny, <laughs> like Apple. I mean, it's it's they have super products. I know, but, but I cannot I cannot spend my money on it because I don't have it. <laughs> It's very uh, simple. I, I found uh, you can buy, uh, like, for one um, Apple laptop, you can buy, like, two or three computers. You can buy two computers and a couple tablets. Must, uh, must Lenovo. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, so um, my, my kids have their own 10-inch tablets, and it's, like, Lenovo's, and it's, like, cheaper than one iPad. Yes, uh, and they're good. Lenovo is like I'm. I'm actually happy with our Lenovo. We bought some Lenovo tablets and probably the cheaper ones, but we're we're happy with them. I, I bought one for two hundred euros, and uh, it runs. I mean, I cannot make a difference between other tablets because I don't use it so much. But okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the kids use my kids use tablets more than that. They actually use a computer. I mean, and laptops are a lot more expensive now. Like I, I when I look for a laptop, I remember back in like I don't know 2010, 2008, laptops were like maybe three hundred dollars, and then now they're like a thousand. Like for <laughs> it, it just uh... the laptop what I'm using yet at the moment is uh, also a Lenovo. <laughs> I don't would like to doing the advertisement for it, but it was 409 euros without the operation system. And I'm putting my favorite on it, it was a Linux Mint 21. <laughs> I put it on 
and on my workstation is a uh, Linux 20 and something is uh, other organized on it. <laughs> but for 409 euros, it's okay. Or uh, yeah, so what did you buy for 409 euros? The Lenovo 15.6. Oh, yeah, uh, the, uh, Lenovo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's a laptop in case of the energy problem. What we have here uh, now, the energy is 2.5 times much expensive from the first September on. So I must uh, come down with the energy consumption from my personal computer 230 260 watts. And if you render KDN Live on it, 500 watts. Yeah, okay, yeah. It uses more. they get hotter faster when you're rendering with KDN Live. Yeah correct but now i using the laptop uh this needs for video conferencing and so 20 watts and if it's stand after the start and doing nothing 6.8 watt yep and now i using the machines 14 hours a day and so um yeah <laughs> you must know my energy bill is very high and now i hope so it's low i also changing the light in the room to a led light from a neon tube uh, 36 watts to a led 15 watts yeah because it's running 14 hours a day and so yeah you must know i did yeah. all that here and i'm still paying the same price i got light bulbs and they just raised the price of hydro yeah how much you paid for the hydro um, yet at the moment i think uh I, I can't remember it's like three 300 canadian dollars um i think every month i may be mistaken on that and that's actually not too bad for my area some people pay a thousand dollars a month uh for their hydro but i think they're like using like a lot of hydro <laughs> a lot of electricity <laughs> People that have hydro. like a bunch of refrigerators in their house and Paul, uh, Paul also mentioned hydro. We don't say hydro. Hydro is made from 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 water or what? Water, yeah. What we say in our area, we say our power is hydro. Okay, I see. Yeah, okay, yeah. The company is called Hydro. Like uh, okay. one of the big companies in Ontario is called Hydro Ontario. Um, this is very. I think, funny. I think they generate power from multiple ways other more than just hydro i, I don't know if they do nuclear look they pr they're producing it by oil and they said hydro to it for selling point yep, yep. <laughs> funny we, we we you know what uh we should have it'd be nice if we had more hydro uh electricity because in, in ontario there's a lot of lakes and stuff and they're not really tapping into the potential but there's a whole we have the alps we have the alps and uh the mountain big mountains over three and a half thousand meters high and we have the water inside the country and also we have the energy supply from these alps from the water power yeah mm -hmm. and uh the funny thing is that uh if the water is uh going down yeah they pump it back yeah, they with it. external electricity they buy it from other countries cheap one and pump it back for the next day and then they use it again and so on yeah. <laughs> you gotta run the pumps to get the uh, energy back yeah yep. but in the night the the energy is much cheaper <laughs> yeah they do that here too they um they have like if you do your laundry at night you run your dryer at night it's yeah. uh it's a you cheaper have a, rate you have a night hydro yeah the overnight yeah. hydro yeah and uh because the industry is not using the power off the grid but i don't know if they're going to keep that because uh uh if everyone gets electric cars although there's not enough <laughs> lithium in the world for that but uh <clears throat> and in 10 it, years <laughs> we wait and, Robbie, we wait in 10 years and, and then we show what happens Ten and 10 years is <laughs> another 10 years another 10 years um <laughs> CBC used to say back in the 90s that the ocean levels will rise four meters in 10 years. Yeah, correct. This is the yeah. same. This is the same with the oil in Venezuela. There is a lot of oil more than in the uh, Saudi Arabia states or so. And then they're doing this oil out and yeah, <laughs> it burns it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so what's your satellite? What satellite do you normally um yeah okay uh, come back to the come back to the talk. we having Astra since the 90s, 1990, and uh Astra 19.2 degrees east. And there are a lot of 19, 19, 19. Uh, 
dot two yeah, degrees can... east. Okay. You must go back. Uh, I yeah, no, so. no, nineteen Astra. Uh, there's yeah. a bunch of nineteen point two degrees here on the chart. All right, I'll bring Correct. up one. One KR, one L, one M, and one N. They are flying in formation in oh, a, yeah. in an eight. Uh, satellites are moving like this. And here is the Earth. Here, I'll bring it up on the screen here, guys. Look, there you go. It's flying. Yeah. And um, the, the, so the no, thing is no, no C band on this satellite, eh? There is no C band. We we don't using C bands here in Europe. This is uh, less. Well, there, there's there's a few. There's a few C band transponders on the satellites around here. I can see. Not not like on this satellite, but on on different satellites. Yeah, but these satellites are mostly the beams are footprinted to Africa or to the oh, okay. or MENA. MENA. MENA means Middle East, North Africa, and uh, we are on the Fringe, uh, on the Fringe side here in Earth. But there's here you have on this 19.2 a lot of Germans. Also, this ORF digital, this red one, the red one is my from my country. The red one, oh, okay, that's uh... the red one with the green ORF, Oscar Radio, uh, ORF here down. Not ORS, ORF, Fox. Here, yeah, we, you have this. This is the, and here oh, yeah. also. This is scripted, and we must have a card and pay for it 28 euros a month. So 28 euros a month for basically like right. cable, like in, in Austria? No, this is only for the right to receive it. Uh, you must pay for the right to receive it. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a GIS. GIS, it's GIS, and we must pay 28 point something um, uh, per month, but all two months we must pay that. Okay. And, yeah, we don't uh, have anything like that. We don't have like a, a system. That's the one thing they have in Europe is like a two tier type of um, pay system where you can have free, like free satellite TV channels with subscription channels. Um, Correct, yeah. We don't have, I think we used to have that. Everyone wants it because back in the C band days in the early 90s, you could get like a, a, a subscription for uh, C band services and then also get mm -hmm. all the free channels that would be in the clear. But we don't really have that now. Um, now, they said I don't. I don't know if this one. There's always a company that you know has rumors they're going to you know start something like this, but I think streaming yes. has taken over the pay market. Um, uh, that uh, you'll probably see more likely that you'll get pay TV through streaming, unless you're going through like the the, the big main companies that have been around for a long time, part of the legacy media. Um, mm -hmm. But with with the free satellite TV, what I like about it is I get channels that I might not necessarily get on cable. Yeah. So you can kind of see what's out there and um, it's kind of like some alternative uh, media sources that you might not even get on, you know, even if you pay for cable. Yeah, the point is that then you have also to pay, as, I mean, you have to pay for this GIS, for the ORF and uh, for the subscription. Uh, you must pay and they say it's free. Yeah. I mean, what is free if I must pay it? Yeah, and if you don't have a subscriber card, you cannot receive it. Also on the terrestrial way, not only on the satellite, also on the terrestrial way, we have DVB minus T two. Yeah, this is the terrestrial. It's the same. You have this um, ANPC or ACPMP or what was it called, like the terrestrial digital system. ATSC, ATSC is ATSC. like, yeah, in Europe, yeah, that's ATSC. another thing I wanted to ask, ask you about Europe, uh, European, yeah. uh, so yeah. like, we don't, ATSC, we, don't have, we, we have, well, you don't have ATSC there, but you do, do, in Austria, do they have DVB-T, where you just have like, a we have DVB-T2, yeah, oh, yeah. two, they've upgraded it since it's, uh, yeah, so with DVB-T, do a lot of people use over the air broadcasts, uh, do you find in Austria? Yes, of course. Uh, we have here a lot of programs. They are encrypted with this uh, with this channel, and uh, they, so they encrypt the over-the-air channels. Yes, correct. They okay. have they have, like simply TV. This is an organization who will bring to the people this encryption form. I mean, 
this is a, a standard you must pay each month. You pay these 28 euros plus these 12, or I don't know how much uh, they, 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 they charge for it. And um, in now, Zoom, can you, get, can, you, can you get like free channels on uh, with the uh, DVB T2? Can you get like a few this, free channels? Like, say you don't want to pay for cable, but you want to get like your local channels. This is an interest question that I cannot answer yet at the moment because I don't start my TVB T2 no, I never started. <laughs> okay, so you haven't actually had a look at it. Okay, yeah. I, I must bring it next time in the week with show. <laughs> and, uh, so I can. Yeah, there's a program yeah. that works well here. It's called Caffeine. It runs in Linux, and I can I use that program for my um, uh h what's the my tuner my um not the hd home run but the um hot uh the hop hodge thing there that the win tv tuners they're little like usb to atsc tuners and it picks that up and i can do a scan and then get all the channels uh mm -hmm. with those i've done a video on it before where i i showed it working on my computer and, uh, mm -hmm. and it, it's kind of nice because it has a scheduling you can set it to uh, schedule uh, recordings really well within that one program it actually What's works cool? better than it works better than uh, some of the other um, like boxes that you can get out there for if you want to use it for a PVR. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't typically use it all the time. You just simply uh, just I like I like having like the cable for the antenna plugged into the TV and just watch it. And I found whenever I messed around with PVRs, I never have time to actually sit back and watch all the stuff that I've PVR and recorded. Yeah. <laughs> um the thing is that i i, I remember at uh, the last time i recording all the channels on hard disks now i have uh, four hard disks and the friend of mine who also get these hard disks which watch this now he's dying <laughs> with 56 years so <laughs> i record this stuff of hard disks and no i cannot uh, i don't watching films i mean yeah. for me it's not just I have only a technical viewing point. I cannot watch any more a film because I came from this uh, video industry and uh, I see a uh, ten thousands of films and over yeah, thirty. You get like I, I call it the Brewster's Millions. Uh, if you ever seen the movie Brewster's Millions, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, basically, what the movie's about is with Richard Pryor, where the guy. Uh, his grandfather, I think it's his grandfather, he inherits millions of dollars and he, and he gets some, uh, I'm going to make you tired of money by giving you like, I don't know, millions of dollars and you have to spend it like within 30 days to make him tired of money <laughs> and how, yes. how to figure out how to spend all the money. Anyway, check it out. It's uh, Richard Pryor and John Candy. Great movie. Check that one out if you if you can find it online somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I anyway, hope so. But so watching watch watching it. movies, I always call like uh, when you get to, when you get exposed to so much of one thing, you get tired of it. I call it a Brewster's Millions. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing is also in 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 eighty five, I learned at Grundig Radio and TV Mechanics. This is also what I must mention. Uh, and uh, on the side, my boss have a video take. It starts in the eighties in Austria. And we have had over 10,000 titles on stock. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I must, most, most my first job, the first year, I must repair all these porno films and all these, uh, all these videotapes in VHS. Uh, they, they are wrong spooled and destroyed and the dog is biting the, the tape. And <laughs> I must repair this for one, two years. <laughs> I will do that. It so was thing? a horror. Yeah, one thing, I, and I hope you have an upcoming video on this. You have a video. Was it the video two thousand? The uh, the, the yes, giant. Yes. Uh, they look like giant audio cassettes. <laughs> the videotape yeah. that uh, we're, one we're moment, in Germany. One moment. Yeah. One moment. So this with Volker's is... getting is uh, in Europe. I think in Germany and probably in Austria too. They had like this uh, format uh, in the eighties, and um, he, he's going to show you the tape. And it's something we haven't seen here in North America. But I, I hopefully Volker will have a video of it. Yeah, there, so there's a it's a video 2000. Look, it this is like a video 2000. Yeah, yeah. And when you do a video of it, show like an old audio cassette next to it. Like, just have a shot of how much bigger it is than an audio set. Yeah, you it's much it's it's bigger than a VHS tape, but you have the uh, you have the possibility to have two sides. One is here, and you can change it. 
and put it inside here you have the two sides you have two times four hours recording time and now why the hollywood film companies are not coming out with this in the united states because the recorder was built from a friend of mine from Philips. Yeah, it was built from the Philips company and was developed for NTSC. And they don't would like to bring it out. In case of that, this is too cheap. The tape is too cheap because on a VHS tape, it costs like the same. You got only four hours at the maximum. At the start time, it was two or three hours and then it's going more. The T120, two hours, T180 and so on our tapes are called like e e180 for three hours because they have other tape lengths uh, so they must uh, sign a t or a e on it and this was so cheap and all people have a vhs machine for the video tech and i'm just, I'm just gonna i'm just gonna run to the room you keep talking i'm just gonna go to the other room real quick okay no problem and um the thing was that that this tape you can record on both sides. You can see that on this side, it's open up this side up and records here and you can change it, flip it to the other side and this will be come to the video and records on this side. So um, the tape costs 400 shillings and um, four hour tape at VHS cost like 300 shillings. So you have to record on this and we change this tape under, under the friends. We exchange it and so on. Yes, what I also would like to tell is um, we have also then in the newer age, we have other LMBs and not also these mechanical things. We have the LMBs from, one moment. Daddy. from this Daddy. Daddy. this is an invacom for the satellite and this is from the noise very low the noise is very low and the amplification is um, i said normal 55 58 decibels if you have you have the feet the feet one wait Daddy. i know this is uh too <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> so, Robbie, where are you? Help me. Yeah. <laughs> help. Exactly. I need somebody help. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we got Dandy joining us. She's uh, first. Well, yeah. so I guess she's been on one of my videos before when she was just Hello. a little puppy. Now she's grown. Oh, yeah. she's she, she, she like a little teddy bear. Hey, pooch. Hey, pooch bear. A little golden doodle. You say hi. Hello. Are you the boss around here? Hello. <laughs> I got the information now. You got the information on it. <laughs> yeah, I got. Uh, got the, uh, what I showed was this LMB at the Invacom. It's a quite okay. expensive, but uh, hey, hey, you have. <laughs> Robbie. Robbie is running away during our show. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. Now, yet at the moment, I cannot say. I oh, We must say also the 13 degrees. We must also mention the 13 degrees we should mention. It looks like an alien-type we weapon is your, is your LMB. It is. If we were a sci-fi movie, that's, uh, yeah, that would be something <laughs> like we could use as a ray gun or a weapon. Is that, like, really? It, it looks like really a ray gun. It it's like, a ray gun. <laughs> Hands up oh, and money up. Alien. <laughs> With the mask on. <laughs> Best you like it. Birds. <laughs> you like this. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get the pesky humans. <laughs> you must you must loving like JR from Dallas. <laughs> you remember him? <laughs> the Larry oh, yeah. Heck man. Uh, <laughs> from Who's <laughs> He's like this. Yep. Uh hey. Mention the 30 degrees, mention the 30 degrees east uh, again for the finishing our job. And uh, please, we have a lot of German programs on the Astra 19. Use this old Patrick, hello. Patrick, <laughs> nice from, to yeah. from the <laughs> 
use this old game. Yes, we can do, Patrick, we can do it. Uh, we can do a, we can do a test. If we can receive something with this old LNCs, this is a good idea. Yeah, this is good that you mentioned this. That's, I think a video to do, yeah, see what's, if you can get you what's going on with your ham radio operation license? I request you. <laughs> Okay, he would like to do this ham radio license, yeah, and I don't know if he's learning, learn much, and go to the test. <laughs> we have another question for you. Um, DM viewing, can yes, you ask correct, correct. He's, he's a German guy, and uh, he have our own channel, and his own channel is in Germany, but I don't, Dr. Tisch is sending something over satellite, but I don't recognize him long time ago, but I know, I know him. He's a, he's a cool guy. He received some weak signals from the satellite. They are secure and for security services or military or secret services. <laughs> yeah, I guess, well, they, they use it for all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Well, even like GPS was a uh, military was uh, for military use exclusively until they made it open for everybody. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. wonder if will Starlink, you might know about this. Does Starlink have like GPS on it? Would that, would the Starlink satellites continue GPS? If a private company were to um, put uh, satellites in orbit, would you know, your GPS from Garmin or whatever, or your phone GPS, would it still work? Okay. okay. Uh, but it's, I don't know if uh, they say they say GPS is gonna like not work someday when the satellites fall out. But uh, would they just replace them because we become so dependent on GPS? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Listen, uh, the, the, I'm wondering. I have a modem, yeah, a stand modem for a cable TV, and this stand modem have a built-in GPS. For what they need a modem on a cable fixed station? that have built in GPS. Tell me that. It's yeah. unbelievable. Patrick's getting his trucker license right now uh, in, in Quebec, which I, I don't know if it's going to be harder yeah. in Quebec than Ontario. When I got you can't mine, drive to Alaska. <laughs> yeah, I remember when mine was like, it was like, well, 20 years ago, I got my truck license and it was like $5,000. Now it's like $10,000. It's doubled. To get your like for the course, like the, for the course, I guess you can go if you've got a truck and you just want to just do a, you know, uh, go get your AZ here in Ontario or your class, whatever it is in Quebec. I have only A and B. I have A for motorcycles and and B for cars. And I would like to do the drug the drug license to C, but um, it never comes to it. <laughs> I don't know why. But Patrick, uh, I hope it was, it was a good license for me. I mean, um, I was uh, was not really ever un unemployed for very long with uh, with that license until That's they correct. get until Chup. they get robots to replace us, and then uh, <laughs> this is a chop. This is a chop. Yeah, I'm doing also a video about the video 2000 for Robbie, and I record the Robbie Strike Show in a video 2000 and play it in my show. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, you can do that. I'll give you the. But my content, I, I, as long as you're not monetizing it, but you're using it, well, you can monetize it. I don't care. Uh, you can. I'll give you, uh, but if it's for educational purposes, please uh, share this content. It's for educational yeah, purposes. Yeah, yeah correct. Absolutely. I, yeah. I, I, I put it in the undertitle. It's for. It's for only for, for for educational education. purposes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, and, and monetize it anyway, because YouTube will boost it in the algorithm if it's monetized. If it's not monetized, it's probably harder to find it. Uh huh. Uh, I I was not monetized because I only have two hundred fifty subscribers. Yeah, you, you, need, you need to watch Volker's channel. Put him on a playlist and watch him over and over again to boost his uh, view yes, hours. And, uh, and you uh, know, yeah. if you watch the more, the, channel, the more the more you watch Volker's channel, the more um, the more you'll learn and watch it over and over again. You, you'll absorb all that information. You can repair your own CD players or a VHS machine or whatever, or I don't know, a high fee set. I, I repair no VHS machine yet because listen, I repair thick thousands of VHS machines. <laughs> and this was my job. I'm working for Philips company in, in this, in the firmware uh, we doing, I'm doing firmware tests in video recorders. <laughs> Nobody knows that the video recorder have a software or a firmware inside, but it have a firmware inside built, and we must found the failures. What the machine is doing if you record on I don't know on the fifth 
minutes and then between the fifth and the 51 minutes what, what happens with the big chance <laughs> was a crazy test but a but a good time <laughs> and another thing we don't have here yet is like cell phone uh atsc3 which i think the broadcast companies at least in north america they missed the ball on that is um having broadcast channels that you can pick up with a phone and they never really pushed the FM radio. Like so a lot of early cell phones and, and I have oh. tablets that have FM tuners in them where you can listen yeah. to radio stations. But I think the mobile companies, they just want you to use their data, you know, and charge okay. you for the data for, um, uh, so I don't know if they'll ever take off the uh, mobile TVs. I mean, if if I could buy a phone with uh, an ATSC3 tuner built into it, I think that would be great because I could like take it on the go with me. Uh, watch the news. I won't have to use my uh, HD home run all the time. That's what I do at home. I have the HD home run so I can get my over the air channels on my phone. Yeah, I see. But um, you can also use the streaming services. But um, I think you, you talk about uh, in Canada is a lot of AM stations. and uh, No, there's not really AM stations anymore. There is a few that still broadcast. There's okay. CFRA out of Ottawa. Uh, there's 1310 out of Ottawa, which is like, um, it used to be oldies, but now it's like a, a news radio station and there's sports mm -hmm. radio on AM. Uh, and then here in the, like South of the border, cause I can pick up uh, stations from Watertown. Uh, there's a ton of radio AM radio stations in the U S but, um, uh, a lot of that's like talk radio. It's either talk, the formats are usually talk radio, um, sports radio, I guess that's it. The sports and talk radio or news talk radio is what, what we get on AM. And then FM will have like uh, a lot of music, but then they'll, uh, there's more NPR type stuff and CBC type stuff. I'll just say mm -hmm. type stuff on mm -hmm. FM radio here. JR is questioning of, uh, if I open, if I have repaired open reels videos, no, I do. I've never done because we have tapes <laughs> and cassettes and, um, I'm coming from the eighties there. Oh, my yeah. repair so, things so are starting open reels was in the sixties in the, in the, in the seventies. Yeah. But, uh, one point is interest Philips Vienna developed the first half inch video in 70 1970 there was no vhs in the room 76 was gvc uh building the vhs tape <laughs> and in 70 they have a video bring it out and grundig also bring a half inch video out but it's long time ago and i don't remember i have only a philips 1500s where the tapes are uh, stacked over yeah there was the one spool here and the second spool upstairs and there was a fat cassette um for uh playing only 70 minutes i mean yeah this was the, the old sony radio um i should bring up kurt there he might want to talk um and i heard someone else chime in oh, oh yeah. kurt and uh this guy here chimed in again he was i don't with the obs logo this is Dieter. The, oh, Dieter, this is the guy you know, eh? Yes, Dieter. you can hear me? Yeah, I hear you, Dieter. Okay, Hello. one second. One second, please. Yeah, with the OBS logo. <laughs> and now uh, we will start camera. Okay. Hello, yeah, you, Dieter. <laughs> Hello, Volker. Hello, Dieter. <laughs> that funktioniert good. It's good. Yes. Please, we have watches around the world, so we have the uh, origin. We, 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 got, we got the world watching today. Uh, I got people from world. U.S., um, Canada. Um, we, uh, we got uh, Austria. And where are you, Dieter? Are you uh, in Austria, too? In Germany. You're in Germany. All right, on. Yes. So we got Europe. We got our transatlantic. In Austria. Uh, live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Is Austria kind of like how we look at Quebec from Germany? <laughs> it's a little, it's a little country here yeah, from Germany. It, it was. We remember it was. We always have our neighbors. Like our, the Canadians will look at the Americans. And say, oh, it's the Americans, and they're like, a, like they're like us, but like slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> but but what is the United States? It's it's a country from Canada, I think. 
<laughs> a, part, a little part of it. And Germany is a country from the United States. It's a yes. county. <laughs> And Austria from Germany. And Austria from Germany. <laughs> you learned right your lessons. <laughs> Yes, there is origins, yeah, that's for sure. Robbie, what is your country? I'm in Canada. I'm in Ontario, Canada. Canada. I'm actually really close to the U.S. Uh, so, like, uh, so I'm like, uh, I, I wouldn't say I can see the uh, see the states from where I live, but I can pick up TV channels with my over-the-air TV antenna from the states. Because, like, here in Canada, uh, we only have like one broadcast TV channel. Uh, we used to have like multiple uh, broadcast TV channels. But I'm close enough to the U.S. border that I have like a rooftop TV antenna that I can pick up like 30, more than 30 on a clear day. But on, a, on most days, I can pick up about 30 American TV channels because I'm so my close. Wife to say to me, come here, come here, say my wife to me. Uh, yeah. uh, but I don't think I've gone. I've I don't think I've left Canada in like uh, since 2008. I've been in. I haven't left the country. I, well, I've been to Quebec, but that's still kind of Canada. <laughs> but if, when I go to Quebec, it feels like you're you've you've made a uh, a trip to a foreign country. All the signs right. are different and everything. You can hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm, I must go to my wife. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Have a nice coffee. <laughs> yeah, 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 coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm up to uh, having um um coffee. This is actually a good. Uh, I actually prefer doing a live stream at 9 a.m. and having having a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as opposed to like uh, um, when I do one at, at, at was it eight thirty at night, and by nine thirty I'm like, okay, I'm ready for bed. <laughs> I'm not a you know why I'm more of a morning person. You know why I'm drinking my cold coffee? You know that because that cool? maybe I'm gonna be beautiful. <laughs> We said cold coffee make beautiful or cold coffee doing the best for you. Yeah, uh, I. This is an interesting statement. That means that too many Americans watch TV and Canadians don't watch enough TV. I, I don't know. I, I might disagree with that because I think per capita, Canadians always were more um, like because we're a colder country. Although North, people that are in the northern states probably watch just as much TV. Uh, Canadians tend to watch more TV in the in the um, in the winter. And then per capita, there's always been like more Canadians online, like for uh, for Internet and stuff like that. So. We've had a bunch of people drop off. We had like 20 viewers before, but now we're like down to 10. I haven't really looked mm -hmm. at my analytics. Is that is that is that in a way that the in the United States not all people having a internet or a web? Uh, I heard about in Texas you have a, a lot of problems with the web and you have uh, unconnected uh, radio holes and so, uh, radio points where you cannot receive. And uh, not the possibility to receiving an internet. I mean, can that be in the United States? I don't There, think so. Well, I don't know. Maybe in Texas, because it's a huge state, right? It's kind of like Ontario. Yeah. Ontario and Texas are, I wouldn't, I don't know if they're exactly, but they're the bigger provinces, you know, and, and <laughs> for province and state for land mass. Although Ontario, the, the province I live in, all of our population is like at the southern part of the province. The northern part is like no one lives up there. It's all empty and wildlife. But then everyone lives like along the U.S. border is where most people live. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to let the dog in. Uh, you go ahead and talk there for a minute, uh, Volker. I'll uh, just uh, go let the dog back in. Okay. What I'll, give you, I'll give you the mic to you. Talk about talk about uh, VHS repair. <laughs> did, did did they actually VHS use more VHS? Repair. So there's more VHS in Germany or not? Sorry, sorry I, in Austria, right? I repaired VHS since '85, and uh, the thing is that it ends. My career in VHS ends in 2005 or so, 15 years ago. <laughs> We never using VHS in case of that we were using a DVD, DVD recording and hard disk recording and so on, and we sharing the DVDs from one friend to the other, and then came out the DVD burners, and so we uh, taking a spindle of DVDs, hundred pieces in one stack, and uh, we record day and night these CDs and. I talk also about uh, we record on the free to air channels, we're recording on a hard disk. And what's happened? 
I have now a lot of hard disks that I don't watch in case of my friend is dying. And um, yeah, nobody is watching these old films <laughs> that I record on these hard disks. I, you yeah. know what? I, I, I used to PVR a bunch of stuff and I have like hard drives full of stuff that I've never watched. It's like, yeah, it's the same. It's I the think same. a lot of people are like that. Yeah. Where, um, oh, I can PVR stuff and then you never have time to actually sit and watch it. <laughs> Space people have time to watch TV. I think whenever they watch anything, it's, oh. you know what? I, I, I never watch anything, but recently I watched, I binge watched uh, Stranger Things. And I saw that and I thought that looks kind of cool. And then I binge watched it. And when I binge watched it. I like I watched it over maybe three or four days, like four seasons of it. Yeah. yeah. I have yeah. also one in the box. I have also one in the box. I produced the film in 83 or eight, no, 84, 85, yeah, 1985. And since this time, I never cut it because it was so extreme. <laughs> It is the banana film. <laughs> oh yeah, have you and have you made have you made any movies uh, in your time like uh, before you started doing your YouTube channel? Yes, correct. I made yeah. movies and I producing movies like the banana film. Okay, yeah, and it's so, it's so ugly you cannot believe. There are two guys, they are pressing the bananas in their faces again, <laughs> and it's. <bleh. laughs> But maybe I can uh, bring it to from video two thousand yeah, <laughs> to tra uh, transfer it, put it on YouTube, transfer it and cut it, and yeah. But I hope so. The audio is also the audio was bad and all was bad, and it's black and white. <laughs> there There's was nothing no wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Like uh, sometimes black and white is better. Like it's like I don't know if I have it here. It's in the other room. That black and white video camera that I have it recorded onto audio tapes from Fisher Price. It doesn't work anymore, <laughs> but it plays back my wife. It was my wife's camera, so it plays back her whole, old home movies from like uh, when she was uh, when, when she was young. She used it uh, like on camping trips and all that. I think I thought it was really neat. Like you could record video onto an audio tape, but it wasn't very practical. The resolution was like three hundred lines something, and uh, it was black and white. So if you put it on a main, a new TV, it's like cropped. You got the like you got the big black cropping around it and all that. So it's, um, but it was an interesting concept for a toy. Um, but now it's like kids today, they that's what we had when we were kids. Kids today, kids have a tablet. <laughs> it's a video camera. It's a GPS. It's a video game machine. It, it's everything. Yeah, it's all, all in it. I mean, also the reducing of all the systems we have. Uh, I'm growing up with a stereo system and I would like to have a record player and later than a CD player and high fidelity speakers, amplifiers, and these needles, they jumping in the music beat. That was the super thing in my time. <laughs> and now they came in with ear pods, no bass. I mean, you must have a 12 inch bass and 300 or 500 watt power. Then you are a person, yeah? But not this bullshit. Ah, ear things. Language, language folder, language folder. We got ch yeah. young children, impressionable minds watching. All right, yeah, I'm but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah. The, the uh, YouTube, uh, because we're on YouTube, and I've had uh, the opinions expressed are the those of the participants, not necessarily those of this channel. <laughs> That was only an emotional explosion. I'm sorry. No, oh yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but but the young people don't understand my big speakers and big bass. But interest-wise, if they if they go into a concert from a pop group or from a modern group, then they enjoy that. This is interest. But at home, they don't use it. They use only the mobile phone and watching in the tablet or stuff like this. I'm also watching in the tablet. I, I watch. I, that's how I watched uh, a TV show. How do I bring him out? I guess he's in there. I just wanted to see if Kurt, Kurt, Kurt wanted to say anything. What are you using for a speaker? Oh, he'd be a guy. At home? Yes, in your stereo system. I don't know the brand or anything like that. They're not huge, but I have speakers. Okay. But you like stereo systems and speakers and amplifiers and CD players. I do, and they, they I do, but they don't sell well on Facebook. 
Uh huh. Uh, yeah, so I think it's the portability because, like, I I I listen to either music with headphones like these, or I'm going to listen to music with uh, in the car. Which usually cars have nice, uh, uh, better than at home surround sound uh, audio in them, except uh, the Dodge that I have. It's uh, it's the surround sound sucks. I can't change the audio for the old vehicles. I used to. I think vehicle, most vehicles you can do this where you put the audio louder at the front and quieter at the back. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, my or... vehicle, I can't do that because I bought the cheap base model, and they took that out. They took a bunch of little little things like that out just because it was a cheaper, mm -hmm. cheaper model. <clears throat> you know that Chrysler at one time had a, just a digital AM radio in some of their cars. I I had one like that. I actually yeah, back in the uh, '80s, my my dad's vehicle was a Dodge, and it just had AM on it. And that's how I like. That's how I became political minded. I guess when I was young, because all I got like was am radio which was talk radio and it's always political talk radio uh, but back then they did have uh an oldies station so i used to listen to, like oldies 1310 which was not that bad but yeah the radio i had in my uh, i used to have a dodge ram van like a big we called it the tin can and um my dad worked in advertising so it had ads all over it <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it had home hardware on it and different companies like that <clears throat> <clears throat> but that was the vehicle I drove when I was like, I don't know, 17, 18 years old. <clears throat> In the ice storm of 98. <clears throat> what was then in 98? Oh, there was a big ice storm that happened here in Ontario. It uh, <laughs> basically, it knocked the power out for like weeks. I think we're, some areas were out of power for months uh, in the cool. wintertime. Yeah, yeah, it just kept raining. Uh, were you affected by that, Kurt, in 98? Like, you were close enough. No, to... it didn't come this far south. Yeah, it didn't go that far south. <clears throat> it affected oh. this area, but I, I do know that northern New York has had ice storms before. So, um, and, but, me, but yeah, we had a big one, and like we were without power for, uh, for weeks. Luckily, in my area, I only lost power probably um, very minimal. Like, we're a few hours uh, without power, but not it wasn't that big but this area kingston i didn't live here at that time but they used to have like uh they they were like weeks without power and this is like a big pretty big city uh, well, not a big city by my standards from growing up in a small town but this uh but i guess it's not as big as ottawa or toronto now we just have hurricanes blowing away uh what do you call yeah. it puerto rico yeah well there's a, there's all sorts of weather that <laughs> always happens New York city or in puerto rico you, you uh, Puerto located? Rico, that latest hurricane that went through that I forgot how many are still without power. But you're from New York. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm from Central New York. Oh, but sometimes the, the 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 hurricanes hit also New York. What we see in the TV. Yeah, but that's like New York, the city, right? Not like the yeah, Central that's on city. the coast. Yeah, yeah, on the coast. Mm -hmm. You're and 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 I know Central's very different than the city. <laughs> mm hmm. I see. Yeah. Yeah. My my hardest winter was in Leedsen in the Styria. And uh, we have minus 27 degrees Celsius. Yeah. If you came from Russia, you say it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but well, that's that like was here in Canada. If you're from so Ottawa. So cold. It was so cold. <laughs> yesterday, and, it was 10 degrees. And I'm like out walking around. I got shorts on, which I kind of regret now because I get now I'm like, I think I'm coming down with. Um, well, with my allergies, I was like, I had to use my inhaler last night, which I haven't had to use in probably a couple of years now. Uh, but mm -hmm. I was like wheezing from um, probably all the stuff in the air because it's fall and uh, all the uh, all the all the stuff in the air is just probably m making me wheezy. Um, mm -hmm. Riding my bicycle like at the mid middle of the night <laughs> with shorts on and it's 10 degrees out. <laughs> Kurt, what you, uh, how you receive the satellites in New York? What is your dish equipment? I have both uh, KU and I have a couple small C-band dishes. I have a five foot and a six foot. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, what, what's your most watched satellite? Um, what's PBS on? Uh, the KU band? Yeah, KU. 
Oh, uh, well, it's 87 West and yeah, 87 West. No, you're right. It's 125. That's one I, yeah. But there also is like one on 87 as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 87, mm -hmm. I think, is a str stronger transponder. So it's easier to pick up 87 mm -hmm. than 125. You have also different difficultness with receiving on the KU band at your location. Different what? Different, uh, different receiving problems uh, at your location. If the weather is changing and a storm is coming or the snow is coming, so you receive your signal good in a good quality, or you have uh, you have a weak signal. Uh, not too much of that. I have some physical, you know, trees and that kind of stuff. Buildings, so I can't uh -huh, receive okay. the whole bit, the whole arc. Okay, super. Oh, yeah. Chainsaw, chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Makes yeah. good firewood. Have a good yes. fire pit and uh, roast some marshmallows. Make some s'mores. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we must talk also on the FTA scan is the 13 degrees. I, I, listen, I'm I'm guilty for that that I not scan all the satellites yet at the moment. I must do it step by step for my kitchen window, you know. Yeah. And uh, my degrees are 15 west with only one or two radios that I can receive till 42 east. And this Maybe. is only in case of that that I cannot repair my motor or dish on the roof because I cannot go up. This is my problem. Yep. So something that would be awesome for satellite nerds like us is uh, if we could rent a roof space and put up a C-band dish on a roof somewhere or someplace like that, um, rent it at a minimal cost and then have a VPN to connect to the receiver and just be able to remotely connect in just uh, mainly for um seeing what channels are available at and on a location uh, mm -hmm. would be a way of doing it if you're if you're limited to like an apartment uh there's no satellite where like uh there's websites for like sdr radios where you can get everything a web is a right. site that comes to mind where you can look at sdr radios from around the world and listen into amateur radio and they have pretty nice antenna setup so it's, sometimes it's nicer than actually building your own SDR radio. Mm -hmm. Somebody's joining us in the, I heard that bloop, the discord, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. Oh, there you go. Hello. Uh, I'm not, hey. I'm not ready. I will come back as soon as I'm outside to show off uh, some stuff, you know, antennas and things. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, guys. All right, we'll see what Patrick yeah. has. Patrick has a few C band. Uh, he has a big C band dish. And, yeah, I know. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's got uh, some some nice setup stuff there. Yeah, and <clears throat> we talk me. about. I talked with Patrick about the C band dishes. Uh, it's long a time ago, but um, and then. We're not talking about anymore about the C band dishes, and I'm interested also in the C band. But um, I have a friend, um, Femi, if he is watching now, uh, he should uh, make a response on my channel. And the funny thing is that um, he was on the same website than I on the dxtv.de, yeah, but then the site is gone away from one day to the other because the owner is dying and so i never have a connection to this group anymore <laughs> and i don't know what's his his real name or stuff like this i cannot search him on facebook oh yeah well <laughs> i don't know maybe find, find out if uh, yeah if you, you, too bad you don't yeah connect with people on discord or telegram or whatatever people use now it's uh uh yeah. a lot of i i am on telegram you might i don't know how you find people on telegram I, yep. I use it, but it's like probably I use it the least because I always like Discord better. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know how you find, but I found it's difficult to find people on Discord as well. So um, because I posted all my all my links, you could probably find me there. But um, uh, right. please, can you go to the thirteen degrees east uh, on the on the links? Yeah. Yes. And, thirteen uh, degrees. Thirteen degrees. This is also one uh, most important set or one very big important satellite on the Euro European room. It have one, uh, one over one thousand channels. Unbelievable. Is it Hotbird? Is it Hotbird or? 
It's hotbird, hot. correct. Hotbird 13 degrees. 13. And There's like three different hotbirds here. I'll just. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, click on 13 degrees. It's much simple. And uh, this have also a lot of free channels that you can receive. And so we're looking at the linksat.com. Um, and uh, this is where you go to see like what channels are available. Don't ask me what channels are available. Just go to Linksat. You can get the answer a lot quicker. Do a Google search. <laughs> I get a lot of people asking me stuff that they could just Google. Uh, and I'm like, uh, just Google it. Yep. Yeah. So uh, what, yeah, what, what, uh, what transponder? Uh... Which transponder? Uh, you can take the first transponders on, one moment, on 10775 horizontal. 775. There we are. All right. So here's like a whack of. Now you have your, now you have your uh, 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 Iran uh, or um, networks and Kurdistan and Balkan and so on. Networks open design Persia. <laughs> it's interesting. You can see here a lot of Arabic channels on this satellite and also they are supporting yeah. You, yeah. you UHD. Oh, but you don't have the other NASA, NASA channels? Because I, I find the NASA UHD, yeah, it's ultra HD, but there really isn't much on there. It just shows sightly videos, like music videos of, like, you know, meditation music. <laughs> interest, interest, what is UHD? This is an interest question. The question is this. UHD means uh, 3,180 by 2,160 points, dots. Yep, but <laughs> the funny thing is that is this in HLG ultra high definition ALG or is this in 10 bit video in H265 or H264 compression and so on? There are a lot of questions about the quality because I heard about these 8K streams, for example, are not on the satellites in case of not. The band wide is not exploding on it, but the thing is, um, they have found out they can compress it in a very small band wide, also the Ultra HD. And the quality is not much better than a HD video. You have thing and I'm noticing too is, is the three, three, four FEC. Yeah, you three by four. It means four. one quarter of the double data of the. Uh, redundant data is available on this channel. If you have yeah. the higher FECs are a pain. That's what I'm finding. If you, have, you need like a large dish for C band, and they're starting to have higher FEC on yeah. KU band too now. Two by three is super. Yeah, three by yeah, four two is by three. Good. Yeah, yeah. So. But uh, the reason why they do that is they can fit more channels. If it's a higher FEC, they can fit more uh, bandwidth in there, right? But also, oh, you need a larger yeah, dish. Yeah. Up. They, have, they have they have more repair. Uh, if it's two by three, they have more repair redundancy inside. If it's three by four, they have only a quarter redundancy. Redundancy yeah. are double sided status. There Hello, Patrick, coming like through a TikTok feed. Hello, yeah, TikTok feed. Unfortunately, you're holding the camera the wrong way. Yeah, I know that, but I think it's got. Oh, maybe it's gonna work. I'm not sure. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Here we Hello. go. Yes. Kind of. But I can see. Uh, I don't. I can't see uh, anything here. Uh, Why? Oh, you can't see the feed. Well, just show what you're gonna show. I got. Ah, uh, just feed. see my eyes. It's, it's ugly. Uh, let's. Uh, <laughs> 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 This application on phone has never been right, so unfortunately, I cannot oh, even the switch the camera the other way around. So <laughs> I'm gonna do this this way. So go. it, I'm not sure if you can see Super. the uh, yeah. the assholes who put out the uh, fiber optics at my dish. Uh, they, they, they broke. Le they, broke the they broke it there. Uh, there. So uh, I need to change the arm. And uh -huh. but I will have some fiber optics by the lake now. <laughs> so they but should be giving you free fiber optic for life for breaking your C band dish. Yeah, you can cut the line. 
Yeah, I should have for life. Unfortunately, I cannot ask that much, you know. <laughs> We're in Quebec here. So uh, there's not really any ways to sue people without uh, be, being our harmful to, to ourselves. So if I try to go this ro road, it's going to cost me a lot. So uh, I, just, I, I just need to change the arm. And as you know, Robbie, I have many of those. So I, do, I just don't have time right now because, like I said before, I'm following a course for being a trucker. So it's taken me a lot of time. And by the way, it, we're in Quebec, so it doesn't cost me anything. Oh, it doesn't? No. Well, no, uh, yeah, yeah well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's good that they're um, they're providing the retraining. Um, I didn't get any government subsidy when I did my training. I just paid for it at five thousand dollars pay. <laughs> and it it's still mobile. cost the five thousand. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it cost me five thousand for the for the license. Yeah, it will cost us if uh, also if we. Already have a trucker license and do some mistakes and need to be requalified and stuff like that for sure. But it's because I think about uh, 160 per hour for uh, the teacher, but uh, I, it's only for those who, who did mistakes, you know, big uh, legal mistakes. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky thing to get. Like, uh, I think the hard thing for me was understanding air brakes because, like, oh my I mean, god, yes, yeah, yeah. And, and then the, oh, sorry, we're talking about trucks right now, but I mean, I'll, I'll, we got to switch, switch off this, but yeah, the um, but I, 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 I joke about this the amateur radio test is harder than the truck test, and in the, driving a truck, you got people's lives in your hand, and amateur radio test is like. You gotta talk on a radio, and yet that test is harder <laughs> you than talk on a radio. Yeah. <laughs> and the the hardest thing about the the, like you just said, the, the thing that is hard about uh, getting a, a driver license for a, we call it a class one here in Quebec, yeah. and uh, the thing that is harder, I will tell you oh, for sure, knowing how to drive a manual, uh, that would be hard. Uh, I expect so, but uh, unfortunately. Well, uh, Love trucks truck are starting automatic. to be automatic, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but that, regardless, that. we need to do, to know that. Yeah. And the air brakes, all the air brake system, it's a real. It's not a mess, but my God, that's just complicated. <laughs> well, I think it's one of those things. On paper, it looks a lot more complicated than it is when you actually do it. Like it, it, I always find when you do stuff like that, it looks so much more complicated on paper than when you actually do it. Uh huh. Yeah, it's like. Uh. It's like you know, more, you know more than me about this for sure. Uh, as I'm still on the paper, uh, <laughs> I, I, I did not drive yet. Uh, license? It, it's just it's been just uh, two weeks, so don't ask me too much. We are right now uh, studying how to make logs and stuff like that. Ever, regardless, that we are gonna all be on uh, Isaac uh, electronic log, log so. But still, we need to know how to make logs for uh, Canada and the States. So stuff like that. It's another subject. But like you on the other subject, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, compared to other people's, uh, my if I put it the right way, my nose is composed here of two LNBs. Hey, uh, 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 LNB also. So... I can't play around. <laughs> Change the background here. Yes. No, I show you my license there. <laughs> that was a that was a call one license is um, for the ham radio operation. That was really complicated to make. My driver license was not so complicated to make. <laughs> they well, they, they used to make it a lot harder for amateur radio licenses where you had to know Morse code and you had to be fast with the, fast enough. If you weren't fast enough with the Morse code, you didn't get a license. But this that, is not that was the case for my dad. Yeah. It is not they, 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 they wanted to make it like an exclusive club, right? They, but the problem is they, it kind of shoots themselves in the foot. They with stop all these they stopped this ago 15 years with this Morse code during right. the test. I, and I don't have that. I, I made it in 2007 or so. And 
why I made it. That was interesting. I can do Morse code on my computer. Like I can uh, type a letter and then have it output Morse code and then receive. And the computer can do all the Morse code now. We do the Morse <laughs> obviously. Yes, correct. But but the, the thing was that uh, I make the license that for ham radio operations. This is the this is the point. What I uh, my 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 issue was that I must make it for a build for a um, for a state department uh, a special radio transmitter, and I don't have a diploma for a radio transmission build. And then uh, said this state officer to me. Yeah, you must have a license. And I said, what a license? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, minimum a ham radio license. Then I must make the license. <laughs> so I come to the license. It's always a matter of license. It's not. It's never a matter of if you can do the job, but are you qualified or authorized to do that job? Uh, Yes, yeah, Patrick, this is correct. Yeah, it, it, it's not only if you can do it, you must can do it, and you must have a license. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, oh. That's why many people in my course, uh, in my class right now, uh, know some stuff about driving, but they all come from, uh, uh, they all workers from uh, from the field, uh, you know, construction workers and stuff like that. They know some stuff about this, but they need to to get their their class too. So yeah. some people are even uh, mechanics. And they all, uh, I have one guy in the in the class that is a uh, uh, that is own mechanic. So this guy mm -hmm. will be loved by everyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, used to have, I, I had people that were like. Um, um, they were construction people, but they wanted to be able to drive drive their trucks. Like they wanted to stay in construction, but they able to have the license to be able to um, move float their trucks, you know, all the equipment around and stuff like that. Anyway, enough about trucks. People are. I mean, we could do a trucker. You know, we could do a trucker podcast sometime. One, one other one other question, Patrick. What you receive with this C band most? I mean, what was is the important thing? Patrick, did we lose Patrick? He might have frozen up there. He's on his uh, cell phone, way out in uh, the boonies. <laughs> North. Here is a here is a here is a radio hole. Yeah, you see, you cannot uh, you cannot see it anymore. All right, Kurt's gonna he head off. So see you later, Kurt. Thanks for joining in today. Uh, thank uh, you. I say thank I, you. Yeah, I don't think uh, Patrick is uh, coming in right now. We'll... Patrick, where are you? No, what I would like to question is uh, what for uh, what for satellites he received with his C band that was a five or a six foot dish, was it a six foot or so? I think no, he has a ten, Patrick has a ten footer. I think ten footer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. the way to go. That's the way to go. Is if you're gonna set up a new dish. Yeah. And I, for, I don't even mention this on the stream here, but um, yeah, Tech 2000. Last I checked, they had uh, C band dishes in stock. So if you want to buy a brand new c-band satellite dish you can go to tech 2000 and t tell them i send you tell them robbie strike sent you um they, they've been very good to me they um they sent me uh the eight footer to uh, do a test on to do a video on uh okay. so i did a video on setting up one of their dishes that's what i use uh one other question the the receiver what i sent to you is uh this is with the se 2166 chipset you remember what we're yeah. talking about the octagon, is that yeah much is that is that much sensitive than the other chipsets, or you have uh, you have uh, what is your experience? Um, I'm finding it's um, I'm gonna have to uh, use it some more, but I, I I was getting everything everything that I was getting with all the other receivers. Okay, so I haven't locked in. I guess I should try. Well, should have tried um, the Russia Today Mux over on one. 13 west i believe it is uh and um because I, I used to be able to get that and then it used to be that was like it was such a weak signal because uh, i think of the high fec rate and also they're using um h.265 even it's standard definition but they still use h.265 uh but i had a hard time picking up that uh that transponder so okay uh, um, interesting. and i don't get and i don't get retro tv um anywhere but c-band in my area 
Okay, okay. And and that uh, to get that, I would need a large dish. I guess you could stream Retro TV. I'm not sure. Their website, if you go to their website, you could watch some of their programming. But I like to watch things via satellite <laughs> instead of going online and watching a stream, right? So uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's kind of the fun of it, right? Like if it's not on the air, I won't go to it. Um, so we're going to wrap this call up uh, in a few minutes here. It's gonna, at 11 o'clock there. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up and, uh, uh, we've got about two hours here. So that's, that's a good, a good, uh, long enough for a, for a stream. I think so. My, my idea is also off, off topic. I mean, phew, I don't have any idea yet at the moment. I must refresh myself and then we can talk about, and then we have a Oh yeah. Sorry. I didn't have the chat room tab up. Sorry if I. So we can plan a new talking and so on. Robbie, I must say thank you to you. Yeah, thank and you for uh, for calling in uh, for for the giving me giving us this talk about what uh, is on available in Europe and uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, it is a lot more channels on Ku Band than on um, than what we get with uh, what, we, uh, what we get with Ku Band here in North America. Um, yes, but uh, it's still it's a fun hobby. I, I find it's a fun. Hobby. my webcam is also what we must say and recognize is uh it, the countries are so small in europe that yep. you have a lot of languages that you have thousands of channels but you don't understand it because you cannot understand the neighbor language and the next neighbor language and the neighbor from the neighbor and so on yeah yeah you, another you, quick question yeah. do they have the english dutch and the uh and the french versions like sometimes some channels will have that right they'll have like the uh audio will you'll get the audio channels for english french and different uh, spanish and all that right switch between dutch and english and in and, and german yeah 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 this is also possible but not in all channels and the interesting is that the country's interests are so that they would like to only supply their own language hmm yeah <laughs> means if you have an original american uh film yeah and you watch it they do it in the in the translation in this um overdubbing yeah overdubbed version they transmit it and the second channel is closed i mean they don't yeah. send the original audio so I don't know question, why. another question i'd have i wanted to throw real quick was um uh does the austrian government subsidize the tv broadcast industry like how they do in here in canada do they give like taxpayer money to the broadcasters because oh we need money we need money you know we're we're gonna we're gonna fail yes. like, we're yes. global global news we, we we need money from the government if we have no we they, they finance themselves by their financing service and this gis gis services are uh, sponsored this uh, state tv orf yeah? and they having a lot of studios and 20 channels they coming over satellite they sending in sd i don't understand why they're sending in sd quality in 576 lines in case of that if you have an old glass tv you can put on your satellite receiver you can resize the picture to a smaller one uh, resolution and it's not how, 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 ma how many people aside from people like us i mean we still probably have a i have a tube tv over here uh how many people you actually have still have a I, how, how many people still have a uh, a tube tv or crt tv i mean in that, in that case they sent 10 programs for a glass tv for a tube tv here <laughs> Really, and they can said it's expensive, but we do that. This is uh, for me. Is this unbelievable? I mean, I must. We must pay twenty eight euros for only having a license, uh, to, and plus the card. You must also pay extra. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah they get yeah. Unbelievable. Every everywhere. Yeah. All right. I think we'll wrap this up now. If you want to continue this chat, uh, we'll be on Discord. Um, okay. I don't know if I can. Put link please if it's possible can you send me the link yeah let me pull that up uh because i don't know if i have it in here go to any of my videos that i've published i don't think i have it in this video but you'll find a link in the uh on my channel like when you go to a video and in the, in the, in the i always usually post the uh, discord link okay uh mm -hmm. i'm just gonna I, I, you know where i go i go to my youtube channel and i click on a video that i know i have it on here Okay. <laughs> and I'll have like either all my links or something like that. And I'll be able to go to the channel. 
Uh, let's see here. Let's pull that up. That's how I find it. Cause like people ask me all the time and I just go to my YouTube channel and do a search. I did a video on that and I find it and I send them the link to it. Yes. Uh, and the, the record is now on the YouTube stored exactly at the same time. Oh, you must, uh, you record it and you, you give it up or load it up. I don't know. I've never made this. There we go. I got the uh, discord. I just want to log into discord. This is my first interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> How do I log in the Discord? Open Discord. I want to use the web browser because I'm using here. I'll post okay. the link. The restream will post the link to Facebook and all these all these places where you're wa you're watching this okay. for the six people that are on there. So this is the Discord link. It should be. It's on Twitch. If you're on Twitch, nobody watches on Twitch. Um, D Live. Here we go. Let's, show you what the link looks like that's the link there but it should be in the chat room e c e capital c uppercase u lowercase m <laughs> where i can where i can see this okay at facebook no it should but be on it, youtube or i guess well it depends on the what facebook link you're looking at because it goes up be on youtube uh-huh And uh, Dieter has a link. I'll, I'll share your link there, Dieter, in the chat room here. Yes. This is what Dieter. Hit. So you want to find his site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said yes. There's Dieter's link. If you want to want to check out his website, if anyone out there still checks out websites, and. Um, all right, and I uh, just wanted to, f I'll keep that up just for a second here. Uh, I, my flow page, my flow code. And if you want to get a hold of me, there's my flow code, my flow page. I have a, another thing, and then the, it stopped working can for a while. Can you send me the Discord? I have a Discord flow code to Robbie Strack. Okay, here we are, Discord invite. Yeah, I have a few, you know what, in the flow code, I also have my Linux chat room uh server that i have so if you want to chat about linux and i don't know, I have a bunch of things i have like a bunch of social medias uh, uh so if you want oh. my patreon and all these things <laughs> it's so many things i forget how many i have <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me my email is robbie underscore strike at hotmail.com yeah i hate to go on my nerves the all right well i'm gonna move move the satellite dish oh. I'm going to go outside and move the satellite dish and uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, next time. Hopefully we can do this again. Have another morning uh, chat. I enjoy doing this in the mornings. No problem. No problem. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing I'm doing the next FTA scan for uh, Europe and uh, doing the next two or three satellites. If it's 13 and you have a 1,400 channels, I'm doing only one video for one satellite. But if a satellite have one program on it, then I'm doing this and the next and the next. Yeah, so because the, 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 uh, there was one guy, he said, uh, hey, there is a wrong satellite or stuff like this. I remember it. And uh, I said, aha, it's interest, wrong satellite. And I must, I was not sure. I go out in the kitchen and have a watch in the night too. <laughs> it was not the wrong satellite. It was that satellite, this three east, but it's on 10 channels on it or 15. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're watching this as a replay, I'll put all the links in the description. I don't think I did all that uh, initially. So uh, that's the YouTube link. Yeah. I'll have to take the old, the call in link out because that, that's no longer going to work after the stream and it'll be a new one. Um, okay. All right. all right. So talk to you later. Um, th thanks for joining. Thank you. Over. And uh, we will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this again at some point. I'll send out a, um, uh, that, uh, that we'll be doing a stream and uh, thank you for, for watching. did I save on using an antenna and satellite this month? About 160. Then I don't have antenna or satellite TV, but cable company, buy me money. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that.
there's a UFO flying above your house. There's an ant top UFO above your house. There's an ant top UFO above your house. Ah, an alien! Ah! <laughs> Pesky human! <laughs> We've come to rule your planet and take away your resources! <laughs> ah! I will let you keep your your pesky little lives and watch your television! <laughs> as long as you bow and you ah! kneel before the UFO operator guy! <laughs> <laughs> and first, you have to do the truffle shuffle. Come on! Do it! Come on! Do it! Okay. Atari!